Hey there, welcome to the Flute 360 podcast. I'm Dr. Heidi K. Begay, and I'm a flutist, educator, coach, and podcaster. My God given mission is to serve you. I am passionate about guiding you, the modern day flutist, to discover your unique voice on and off the stage. The goal of this podcast is to help you thrive, both as an artist and as a musicpreneur. Go ahead and grab some espresso, your favorite notepad, and let's get to it. Today's episode 288 is titled, The Grit Behind the Glory. Hey, hey there, Food 360 er So today's topic is near and dear to my heart. It is something that I have noticed in my own personal and business life, and hopefully you can resonate with it as well. And that is, my question for me to you is, do you want the glory, the glory and the honor of a certain title or prestige or an award, but doing the work, doing the gritty work behind the scenes To obtain such goal is not so favorable. It's not really that fun. Well, you're not alone. I find myself doing this from time to time. So for instance, if you're thinking, okay, Heidi, what the heck? Give me an example. My example is, for example, if you're getting ready for an orchestral audition. Say on that orchestral list, you have Mozart's and Vivaldi, some standard repertoire, and let's say there is also Volaire. Of course, we as flutists, we would all love to be able to play Carnival of the Animals Volaire at tempo overnight. Who wouldn't, right? But doing the messy, gritty work behind the scenes is a whole different story. We want to be able to say, yeah, I can play that at performance tempo. Here I go. But we know that that isn't a true reality. We understand as flutists that we are going to have to do the real work behind the curtains. And that consists of really examining our single tonguing, moving up to double tonguing, moving up to triple tonguing if need be, really examining the coordination between tongue and fingers. It's a lot, and we know that it's going to take a lot of work. But just showing up and doing the thing and noticing and observing small steps towards your goal feels really good, but it is time-consuming. So what I've been noticing in my own life is, for instance, say I've been praying to God lately and asking Him for a patient heart a heart that has a gentle spirit. Now, if you are a close family member, friend, or past student of mine, you know that I tend to be, (laughs) tend to be kind of stubborn and really not that patient. And not that it's an excuse, but I get super passionate about things, how I want to run my studio, how I see the world, how I want to grab a hold and take life by the reins and really go at it. Sometimes my passion gets in the way and I become a little impatient with things. I could easily see myself getting impatient with how long it takes to accomplish something. So in prayer and in meditation, when I do my daily devotions, oh, I don't know, about two, three years ago, I was really praying for a patient heart. Now, of course, going back to that example of Bolaire, it would be lovely. It would be so nice to wake up one morning and go, oh, I am so patient. Look at me. (laughs) That person in front of me at the supermarket who's taking forever to pay. Oh, yeah, I've got all the time in the world. No problem. I'm not going to get hot headed and worry about this. Unfortunately, again, it takes time. It takes time to nurture and to mature this characteristic. So as I'm praying and as I'm saying, hey, God, give me a patient heart, he will lovingly 
give you circumstances and life events where you can practice said thing. So as many of you know, in my car accident two years ago, boy, oh boy, did life throw me a beautiful opportunity to practice patience. So it's one thing to say, oh, I'm a patient person, but it's a whole nother thing to actually exercise that characteristic, exercise that trait in real world events. Are you patient at the supermarket? Are you patient with, I don't know, the gas pump taking a long time to fill up the car and payments not going through? Are you really patient with, you know, a student's parent who doesn't pay on time, who shows up late, right? Of course, these things, you can set up healthy boundaries for that studio example, but practicing patience in those really heated moments is a whole different thing. So my accident really tested my patience. Going through and finding a reliable, progressive rehab program, finding the right doctor, it tested my patience. It taught me these things take time. Healing is not this organized, beautiful, symmetrical thing. It can be, but oftentimes it's messy. You will feel like some days you're going two steps forward and one step back. Some days you feel like you're going three steps forward and you are actually making the progress you want. It's a whirlwind of different events and variables and emotions. So the rehab program, the healing process for me these last two years actually developed, actually molded and sculpted this trait. And now, of course, it's a lifelong journey. I'm not perfectly, you know, (laughs) 100% patient all the time, but the progress that I see, that I have seen in myself these past 24 months is a complete 180. So when life throws you lemons and you think, oh my gosh, why is this happening to me? Look at the silver lining. Look at what that event or tragedy is trying to teach you. Maybe it is teaching you the very thing that you want to obtain. The very title, the very award, the very honorable mention that you want to wear proudly. So it's going to take time. And I encourage you to have the courage to be brave, to do the gritty, messy work behind the scenes. So that way, when these different circumstances come up and you want to shine proud for having this title, for having this award, you know that you have done the messy work behind that title. So many of us, and I know I'm included in this way back when, way before I even actually obtained my DMA, I wanted to be Dr. Heidi when I was 13 years old. I wanted that prestige. I wanted that title of doctor. Now, it took a good 20 years for that young Heidi at 13 to really obtain that title of Dr. Heidi. Did I want to move across the country two, three, four times for three different degrees? Heck no. (laughs) Did I want to invest thousands and thousands of dollars into music and instruments and scores and apartments? Heck no. It's a lot. It's a lot to put yourself out there and to have this leap of faith and go into a new season or chapter where you are probably a little unsure. But if you show up and do the work, it will pay off to some degree. Whether it is you actually accomplishing the task at hand, like the initial goal, or maybe something new and beautiful that you didn't expect, maybe that unfolds. Maybe that is the outcome. So where I saw this in my life Another example outside of my rehab program, another area where I saw myself not wanting to do the work, the real work, was in my business. I noticed a common theme among successful business owners. 
They were mentioning in podcasts and webinars, etc., that they read a book a week, at least maybe two or four books a month. That is something that I notice, like the Jenna Kutchers and the Amy Porterfields and the Russell Bransons, they talk about reading quite a bit of literature in business. Whether the topic is funnels or sales or landing pages, website design, SEO. And by the way, all of these terms, all of this terminology is for you, the music business owner. You are a business. So don't think for a second that I'm going off on a tangent in a whole different area. No, you are a business. Knowing how to market, invite people, enroll people into your offerings is essential for you to be a successful Modern day flutist. Anyways, I digress, but I was noticing all of these head honcho business people killing it. And they were saying that they were reading one book a week. Now, naturally, this is where I had a fault in my life. I wanted to have the knowledge of being a marketing queen, I wanted to have the knowledge as if I was a complete, amazing enrolling queen, (laughs) but I wasn't willing to do the work. I wasn't willing to read a book a week or at least two books a month. That's a problem, right? We want the honor and the glory sometimes, but we shy away. We back away from the real work, the work that we know that we know is going to truly move the needle forward, whether it's in our personal life, our playing or our career. So what work are you avoiding? What's the grit work that you can do today, this week, this month, for you to see real results, for you to be proud of obtaining that title, prestige, or award? I'm rooting for you. And if you want to share your story, if you want to let me in into your life, I would love to hear all the details through social media. Please follow and join our free Facebook Flute360 group. It's completely free to join, and we discuss about these different topics all the time. And last but not least, if you are going to the National Flute Association's conference in August 2024, Flute360 will be exhibiting at booth 226. That's 226. And I invite you to come because obviously I want to nurture our relationship. I want to get to know you better and I want to meet you. And for coming to the table as a thank you from me to you, I am hosting a 360 raffle. And in this raffle, we have amazing offerings to help you move the needle forward in your flute playing and flute career, plus a lot of neat swag. So we have over a thousand dollars worth of goodies in this package and the different offerings and goodies include a one hour flute lesson, a one hour coaching session where you can pick my brain about your career, school curriculum, and or business, and we have a lot of swag goodies, a t-shirt, a Flute360 mug, a canvas bag, some stickers, and last but not least, a six-month supply, a six-month access to our Flute360's accelerator program, Tier 3. And in Tier 3, you get one-on-one pocket coaching group chat through our Voxer feed in our Flute360 community, access to over 25 videos in our program, and much, much more. If this interests you, if you're like, heck yes, all you have to do is go to my Flute360 booth, which is booth 226, anytime between Thursday and Saturday through the NFA 2024 convention, drop your name into a bowl, and the deadline to do so is that Saturday by 4 p.m. I will announce the winner via Facebook Live or Instagram Live, and you can pick up your bundle Saturday night before the exhibit hall closes by 5 p.m., 
or any time during Sunday on August 4th. I cannot wait to see you. I cannot wait to meet you, my friend. So if you have any questions about the goodie package, the raffle package, you can always contact me at HeidiKBegay.com or at HeidiKBegay at gmail.com. See you soon. Thank you for listening to the Flute 360 podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and review through your favorite podcast app, such as Apple, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, among others. Thanks! Let's talk about flute!